thank you for being here and being part of uh, our worship on Sundays. And really that video entailed a great deal when it came to when it comes to our Sundays and being thankful for everything that we do have on Sundays. And also, of course, during the week, there's a lot of things that go on. And, and uh, today, uh, I set apart this time, uh, I've done it, I think, four or five years where we just really uh, give thanks to the Lord, remember what God has done throughout the year and uh, through you and your lives. And, and last week was Ministry Appreciation Sunday and, and uh, really took the time to say, we appreciate you and appreciate all that you do in ministry and the Ministry Appreciation Sunday uh, even the sense of the word, even the meaning of the word appreciation, it's a, it's a feeling of being simply grateful, to be grateful for all that we have in ministry, and that's what we did last week. Uh, even another part and piece of that is an ability to understand the value and the worth and the quality or even the importance of something or someone this ministry is important to the Lord, it's important to me, it's important to all of you that really get in on this and say, God, you have given us so much, we are appreciative. We see the full awareness, we, we have a full awareness of what you have done in ministry and through ministry. And we looked at, of course, our regional missions and we looked at ADP Sports and how God has given us the opportunity to really pour out into the lives of people in this community and do all that God would allow us to do beyond our Sundays. And of course, that takes an awful lot. And I'm very, very thankful. Today now, we come into a place of being thankful. And saying, God, we are very thankful. Go to 1 Corinthians 16. I'm going to read something there in a moment. I want to remind you that in a couple of weeks here, uh, two Sundays from now, we have our Christmas production. We're going to be doing it on the 12th of December. And uh, it's going to be, uh, as you can see up on the screen, entitled Witness His Majesty. There'll be some song and there'll be some, some parts that will be acted out. And it'll be really, as it says up there, a story of Christ's miraculous birth that's told by people who saw him firsthand. It'll be quite interesting. I believe that you will truly be connected with, of course, our Savior and his birth in a very special way. Just to think, I don't not jump in the gun, but I know that when you hit Thursday and it was Happy Thanksgiving, that was the 25th of November, which means, aha, one month later we will be in thank it will be in uh, Christmas time. Aren't you all thrilled by the speed of which everything goes? And we can say it a hundred times. It seems like we cannot grab a handle on it. So back to right now, back to this moment today. Thank you, Sunday. The word thanksgiving, it's found in your Bible a number of times, and if you look it up and, and study it out, there's different places that you can find the word thanksgiving. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. There's so many songs that have been written about thanksgiving. I jotted down a few of them just in my mind. I, when you start looking things up, it gets crazy, but when you think of uh, even Chris Tomlin years ago sung a song forever, give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever, for he is good. He is above all things. His love endures forever. And of course, the, the uh, chorus is sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing praise. How about the old song off of Psalm 100? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and he will make me glad. I think of... Thanksgiving, very simply the word in your concordance, the way it's defined, says something I thought was great. Gratitude, of course, that's there, but actively, comma, grateful language to God in an act of worship. Hmm. How important is it to give thanks unto the Lord? I know that the scriptures say we're to give thanks all the time without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you and me. We're to pray without ceasing. It's constantly in the word of God to be thankful. And thanksgiving is something that comes out in some of the most beautiful hymns. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you 
for making me whole. You go through all those things in your mind and you're saying, okay, thank you. But what about being thankful today for Sundays at First Bible? Thank you Sunday is centered up on giving thanks to God as an act of worship and giving thanks for God's people and how God works through them. Some of you really see this as an honor and privilege. Some of you see it as sometimes a weary task. But I will say this, God is thankful for you. And you being thankful to God for all those other people. In fact, going up and saying, I'm thankful for you. I give thanks for you. Would be a really, really neat thing to have happen more and more in our ministry. Yes, you can, you can give a card to somebody. That's good. You can send a text. That's good. Sometimes it's just a matter of what it says up there. Actively grateful language to God is an act of worship. So you thank him first. He then puts somebody on your mind and your heart. And you go, thank you, Dwayne doing worship every single Sunday and being there not to do it but rather to live it. Thank you for being part of this ministry, Bobby, and all that you are part of. I'm so thankful for the staff that we have, for Brian and for Steve, for, for uh, Josh and for the whole crew. God allows us to have five different men on staff as pastors. That's just remarkable to me. And we work intertwined in the Spirit of God by the Word of God's principles to minister the Word, to minister in the way that God has called us to, but our whole staff, and, and of course with Pam and Mindy and, and everyone, the, the whole team here, the whole crew is just tremendous in how they serve and how they desire to. And I'm thankful, and they know that. I was joking with the, the group in first service, but I have to say that, you know, you guys, by the way, you always treat me so good. I don't know, maybe I lost that. I can't believe it. Did somebody come up and steal my favorite card? Oh, no. Oh, I found it. Oh, this is a really, really favorite card. Because the staff wrote a little neat thank you to me a few weeks ago. And by the way, I am so thankful. Thank you for being so thankful. All of you are so thankful. I say this often. You, you are too good to me. The reason this card means so much is the words are beautiful and they're very kind. But in there was a $200 gift card to Untuck It shirts. Now, I can't afford them on full price, but I put it to work on Friday. Yes! 25% off, 50 this, half of this. I found the bargains. Woo, yay! So why don't you dress butter? I'm going to now, so it's going to be better. But give thanks. Thank you. Gratitude. Thank you, God. Thank you for the crew that is around First Bible. And thank you for the men and women that minister on Sundays. Well, you saw those pictures and that video and everything like that. We're going to look at that. Acknowledge. How about the word acknowledge? That comes into this. I'm acknowledging you today. I'm saying thank you and I'm acknowledging. They're not exactly the same work, but they were in tandem. It is important to give thanks unto the Lord. Yes, grateful language to God is an act of worship. I wonder sometimes if we are hurting in worship because we don't have grateful language to God. Maybe that's a piece and part of why worship in the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, is a little bit dry. It's like... On the, on the chalkboard. It needs to be vibrant. And it needs to be filled with the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So what about, hey, giving thanks to the Lord. Acknowledging what He does. That would really bring a place for us in worship. Then it overflows into acknowledging people. We cannot keep thanks <laughs> to others for God in them a secret anymore. It shouldn't be a secret. Oh, I'm so thankful for so-and-so, but I've just never told them. Tell them. Go up and say thank you. I acknowledge that you serve. I acknowledge that you're always there. I acknowledge that you do this and you do that. And I'm so thankful because you have such a good heart and a good attitude all the time. It's good to acknowledge. The very simple definition. To know upon some mark. You saw something, a mark, and you know upon that person and a mark. You, oh, I mark that. I see that. That's a good thing. You say, okay, what does it also mean to recognize, observe? Sometimes I think we're so stuck on watching ourselves. 
The old phrase goes, hey, I can't understand why nobody saw my beautiful outfit today and how nice I look and how, how I smell so good and my hair is done so well. You know why people do not notice that? I've learned this from an old pastor friend. Because they're doing the exact same thing that you are doing, which is watching yourself to see how good you look and wondering why no one's looking at you. And if you've got all 100 people in the room and they look at themselves, how could they possibly recognize that you look so wonderful? You see, sometimes we don't acknowledge because we don't observe. We don't care. We don't recognize that God's at work in someone's life. What would it be like to walk up to someone in the children's ministry and say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Terry and Patty Sanchez, for watching my grandson today. Especially you, Terry, because he loves you now, man. He's going to be looking for you. He's a guy's boy, man. He wants to hang out with the guys. So teach him how to be a preacher because all the other stuff, he got concussions and all those things. <laughs> Thankful that people would take the time to watch children over there. To take care of them. Thank you. I acknowledge the work that you did. Thank you. I acknowledge the work you did in the coffee house to make sure. Thank you, ushers, for making sure that everything's taken care of. Thank you, team, for what you do. It's still a three-fold cord. It's still a three-fold cord. I'm going to get there in a moment. First Corinthians chapter number 16. All of you hopefully are there. If not, I'm just going to read it for you. It's near the end of his letter, his first letter to Corinth. And Paul is talking about all these people that mean so much to him. Verse number 15, of course, he mentions the house of Stephanus, Achaeus. In verse number 16, that ye should submit yourselves unto such and every one that helpeth with us and laboreth. He's saying, hey, you should submit in the teamwork, in the partnership, in the closeness to camaraderie, in the church, in the Holy Spirit. Of course, he's talked about gifts and ministry and all of that. Here it is in verse number 17 and 18. I'm glad of the coming of Stephanus and Fortunus, excuse me, Fortunatus and Achaeus, for that which were lacking on your part, they have supplied. I'm thankful for them coming behind and taking care of what was missing. They stood in the gap, and they handled things. That happens in your church every Sunday right now. People are doing that already. Some people are sick. Some people aren't able to be there. Someone else is stepping in there to do that. This is a beautiful thing in verse number 18. This is what we're doing today. For they have refreshed my spirit in yours. Therefore, acknowledge ye them that are such. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. In the 21st century, maybe it's a video. Acknowledge what God did to put this piece of property on God's heart and then have it transition over to the people's hearts of this church, purchase the land, end up developing the land and having this just spot here. Thank you. 23 years later, 24 years later, for the men and women 20, like 24 years later, men and women that are singing and praising God and making sure that the slides are changed, making sure everything is done. You and I know that it still takes a threefold cord as you go to Ecclesiastes 4. I'm going to use this as I did last week for just three or four minutes to just kind of highlight this principle because that ministry appreciation and that thank you Sunday have to do with a threefold cord that is not quickly broken. It's really powerful. Again, in the background, Solomon himself is a carnal thinking man who is not really attributing things directly to on high. He's really thinking about things under the sun, under heaven. And so he's saying in verse number 9, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor, as I mentioned last week. Yeah, that's good. Hey, I'm glad that you're here with me. Now we can share in the profits. <laughs> But sometimes that can be a little selfish. In ministry, though, it's, hey, let's share the blessings in a good way because that's eternal. It's great. Isn't it great for different men and women, husbands and wives, families to minister together? And then you get the blessing together and you, you share those things at home. And then you can actually argue at home as to who's better at ministry, your husband or your wife. Always a good time. Just kidding. Verse number 10. For if... A, fall, 
the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him. Oh my, that you would be in that place. Solomon realized, hey, when you just live by yourself and that's all you think about and you're just stuck on you, that it can be really, really rough. Really, really tough. If you do become an island to yourself, as I talked about last week, gosh, why would you want to be in a place where you had ministry being done all by yourself? It is definitely better that you are with someone else. That's why there's always two people watching the little kids, two people teaching, two people, two, always two that are in there. There's a husband and wife team and another husband and wife team in the Sunday groups. There's a couple of teams here and a couple of people there. And they're partnered together on purpose because this is a great principle. Verse number 11 and 12 then in this passage. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? It is good when the little, as I mentioned last week in the illustration, a little child comes sneaking into bed. They want to get warm. And they want to ruin your warmth. And so they're there to just mess with you, mommy or daddy. And usually they want to snuggle with mommy. And daddy's out the door. But we do know that really the whole beauty in that is that that little child in their bed, they got to learn to stay in their bed. I'll give you another blankie. Somehow if you give them one more blankie or one more little stuffed animal, they're okay. You say, well, they just want to be comforted. Yes. Is it possible that little child that's three or four years old is just cold and they want to snuggle up? I have watched where my, both my grandchildren want to go back into their mom's womb sometimes. I think that's kind of funny. They just want to crawl way back up in tummy in mommy's tummy, you know, because they just want to be close and that warmth and not be alone so that it goes into verse number 12, this ministry tie. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. If someone, that prevailer, the wicked one comes up, if someone who's an enemy comes, the two can fend off even better. But a three Fold cord is not quickly broken in ministry, in the labor of the Lord, in serving God. There's nothing like it to have a threefold cord. It doesn't mean that it may not be broken. The point is, it may get really under a lot of stress and a lot of friction and a lot of trial and a lot of testing and a lot of heartache. But God says, be of good cheer through his son, Jesus Christ. I have overcome the world in the midst of your tribulation. Solomon seemingly has forgotten that, but he brings in a great principle here. And so, as you think today about Thank You Sunday, again, through the pictures and the video, we present God's people in pictures. And it portrays God's purpose. It shows from last week, last week's video, this week's video. The video expressed a message. God's people are living their faith out. And it's in God's purposes. They're doing God's purpose. They're fulfilled in God's direction, in God's way of doing things. For the glory of Jesus Christ, for the glory of God, in the name of Jesus. It is for by grace that you serve. It's for by grace are you saved. It's for by grace and you jump in on faith and you say, God, I never knew what it could be like. To be on the edge of a mess where I didn't think it was going to happen, but I'm here by faith, and he just delivers this grace gift. Somebody shows up. Somebody comes in. Somebody like what Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 16. And we acknowledge how they refreshed us because somebody came in. There's a lot of beautiful things that happen on Sunday mornings. And I just want to remind you of some of that. You saw a little video with some pictures, but I just want to put it up. But you also saw some slides of things that happened during the week. And I'm going to just hit those as highlights as well because there's more that's going on than just Sundays. It says up there on the screen, the first section is the worship. The presentations team, secondly. Right here, we're just talking about in the auditorium here. There's a couple, there's a lot of people here in first service, a good number in second service. You sit here and a lot of things you know. They go pretty well. Now, does anybody notice if there's anything wrong on that slide? Are you looking? You find anything wrong with it? Stare at it for a minute. Is it the right color? Uh, the word's spelled right? Instrument. Okay. Is that all good? Yes? You see, that's not what you should be drawn to. 
you should be drawn to the idea that there's people that are represented by this. There's people that are involved with voices singing up here. There's people that are involved in worship when they sing and when they play instruments. Mason plays his instrument, Maddie today, Mike and Amy Meyer, Nancy Nation, Josh Ramey, Steve Alsop, Brian Rice, Ray Borden, Mac Jones, Andrew Brogan, Lee Tiller, Joel Lynch. Lee Tiller played up here in some form or fashion over in Vesper Hall as well and playing the piano for this church since it started in 1997. The voices and all the people, Dwayne and Teresa, Ben Velasco, Gabby, Matthew and Megan, uh, uh, Mindy, Stacy. There's some neat family connections here. Mindy, her, her daughter Rebecca, and of course uh, Nancy with her two children. It's really neat to see these type of things. Catherine and Cindy, Bryles and, and Milt and Lana and Mackie and Carol and Katrina. See, there's just this neat, beautiful pieces and parts and all those names. They mean something. They mean something because we acknowledge and recognize and say that, hey, I am thankful for you. I really give thanks for you. The presentations team. There's a bunch of people that are working to make sure the internet works well enough so that the images on the video go out online. And people that are on Facebook right now, Facebook Live, they might watch it at YouTube later, but at least those that could not be here today, and many have been sick and, not, and they're ailing, they want to be connected with their church, those people do that. There's people that do sound, there's people that do the parts of the presentation where they're tech people, media people, they're doing so much that there's so much going on. And again, we notice when things don't go right, don't we? We go, oh, that was, I cannot believe that the sound wasn't right there. I just want you to know, and I'm going to go on record here to let you know, they've been watching all of you for five years. They've got pictures of you and what you're doing while you're sitting there. <laughs> They're taking pictures. And someday I'm going to play a video of what you look like from back there, from the tech team taking pictures of you. You scared now? Just kidding. You see, we are thankful for them. We're so very, very thankful for all of those that get involved in each one of those. That's an idea. When I put up these different slides, the coffee house and the welcome team and the ushers and how beautiful it is out there in the lobby and how the different ushers are working and serving. Oh, Jeff Patridge and Buddy Black. Buddy Black, I think, will be an usher even when he's in heaven. He is going to help the Lord put everybody where they're supposed to be. I just figure it's going to be that way. I don't know. The coffee house with Laura and Dave Dumbler and my wife Cheryl helps out out there, loves doing it. Barbara and Charlie Johnson and Megan Alexander, Courtney O'Neill, Becky Pennock, ushers. The list is so long, so many of them that you know, many of them are right here in this auditorium now. So thankful for the ushers, the welcome team with the Talberts, the Allens, the Bryles. It's good to see Steve and Cindy doing well, Mike and Lisa, Mike and uh, Jeannie Sidebottom. There are so many people that come into play and come in to be part of, and we say thank you, we acknowledge. Now you have to think of how you're going to acknowledge, how you're going to do what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16, when that phraseology, uh, and I just want to make sure I, I read it properly, but that phraseology that Paul uses, he says, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge ye them that are such. This is a biblical principle by Paul the Apostle. Well, they all know. I just, you know, this thank you. They get their thank you in heaven, and that's fine. Oh, okay. God says, be thankful. Acknowledge people. The Sunday groups, the discipleship hour, there's so many neat things that go on with our Sunday groups. The investors have been getting together as a class since 2010 from the different events that they have. But every Sunday, someone's teaching the Bible every single Sunday, whether it's Doc. Clemmer or Bobby or, or, or uh, Steve Bryles or somebody else teaching the Word of God constantly. They have a Wednesday night Bible study. I'll mention that as well really soon here. But just think of the Sundays and what's going on. Discipleship hour and going on right at, at 9 o'clock. They didn't have it today. But those people that said, hey, I want to be involved in discipleship. I want to learn what it means to be a disciple of the Lord and have somebody take me through the Word of God. But I also want to learn what it takes to be a disciple maker 
and make disciple makers. To really say, okay, God, how can I train up and teach up somebody else? Right now in 1030, um, the 1030 Sunday group is getting together. It's a bunch of uh, people and and age demographic, maybe uh, some people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s most of all. And they go through a Bible study each and every week led by Rick Adams and his wife, Randy Adams, Mike and Amy Meyer. There's so many neat things going on. The Allens that are part of it, different people. And at the first of the year, we're going to add another Sunday group. I'll let you know. Stay tuned. It'll fit beautifully with where God is taking us. But when you think about Sundays and all that goes on, do you ever forget sometimes about the youth group and the children's ministry? They're going at it hard. I mean, the children's ministry are going at it. All the time, they're always there. They're armed and ready, and the list of those people is so long. I I just have a long list, and we had the Give Thanks picnic, and I recognize all of them. There's so many of those people. I was just going to show you even the picture of it all on the list. This is all children's ministry people that serve in children's ministry. Here's all the ushers. What an incredible bunch of people that say, hey, I will be here for your children. I will watch the little ones and I'll teach them the Bible. I'll I'll take care of the older ones and I'll teach them the Bible. I'm here, Pam, Snow, and all that is tied together with that. Her and her husband. Her husband is her number one assistant. Always there. You see Mark going around, making sure things are good to support his wife in her ministry leadership. What a beautiful picture of the threefold cord, not quickly broken as they rely on the Lord Jesus Christ and their labor as a couple. It's beautiful, again, as I mentioned earlier, seeing couples in worship together or in some type of ministry together. Of course, our youth ministry with old Pastor Josh and his wife and the whole servant team. They're after it right now at 1030 in the fellowship hall, and they're having a great time studying the Word of God. See, God's family worships together each Sunday for the most important thing that we do. See, Sunday is the most important thing that we do, but not the only important thing that we do. I say that every once in a while. Just remember that. We're in the temple And yeah, it's the most important thing on Sunday, but we go house to house, and that's the most important thing as well, either in somebody's house or here in the coffee house or in here in one of the rooms here that we're using in this building. Behind the scenes, there's people that do things all the time to make sure Sundays go well. And during the week, they're the support people. They're the servants like the people in the communications ministry, the people in the hospitality ministry, the people in the cleaning crew. They are always around, those communication people taking pictures, trying to capture God's handiwork. As I mentioned earlier, those pictures portray God's people doing God's purpose. Who's taking those pictures? There's people that are doing their Facebook or doing things online, social media, Mackenzie and Josh and Brianna Ramey, Andrew Brogan, Robin Houston, those people like that in communications, hospitality, the list is so long with Ginger and Crystal and Marty and the whole crew. There's so many neat people that are involved in that. And they're behind the scenes, they are beneath the surface, as I say often, just saying, hey, whatever it is, God, that you would have us to do, we are a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you, God, which is our reasonable service. It's reminding us to acknowledge and be thankful. This is Thank You Sunday. The cleaning crew, oh goodness, aren't you glad that you come in and the carpet's clean? The chairs are clean? People come in here and vacuum the floors and they vacuum, sometimes I see them vacuuming the chairs. They clean up the coffee house, all the bathrooms. Aren't you glad that there's toilet paper when you go potty? Who do you think does that? Thank you, cleaning crew. If you want to be in a place where God could use you and you didn't want to have any attention, there they are right there behind the scenes. There's the care ministry and special projects. You say, what is that? You'd find out real quick if something debilitating happened to you and your family. And someone said, hey, what can I do for you? Beyond the hospitality team, hey, do we need to make a ramp so that you can get your spouse up into the house do you need a ramp instead of the stairs do you need somebody to come over and fix your roof do you need somebody to come over and fix your gutters or clean your gutters we have people that are willing to do that and care that care ministry how do you think the landscaping happens and all that mount mowing that goes on i know that you believe that god every night comes out with a little pair of you know uh 
scissors and cuts all the grass out here, right? He comes out himself. No, God uses people. And he continues to do that. And that's you. That's you, church. And you're beautiful to serve God with. So let me just highlight something for three or four minutes. Why don't you go to 2 Timothy chapter number 1, and I'll catch you up there when I get there. Because I'm going to highlight something that I preached about a few weeks ago. But just do a couple minute devotion on it. And look at it from a different side. In verse number 8 and 12 in 1 Timothy. Excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter number 1. The next slide says Bible studies, small groups, prayer groups. We listed 12 different things in that video that are going on. There's a Wednesday night Bible study for the investors. There's a Wednesday night Bible study for the young people, primed. They're over there studying the Bible and having a good time every Wednesday night. Mom and dad, get your kids in on that. You have to do your part in raising them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It's a command from God. But what about a youth ministry team that wants to bring a Bible study to the young people every Wednesday night? They're there for them, just like they're there on Sundays. Small groups. There's small groups at different people's houses on weekends, Friday nights, Saturdays, sometimes on Sundays. There's small groups. How do I find out? You've got to call and ask. Okay, well, we need to get better at our communication. Yes, we need to. We definitely need to. But there's a lot before you that you can find out an awful lot. You can. You really can. There's prayer groups. The women pray every single month, either on a Monday or they incorporate it on Thursday. Did you know that women have a Bible study on, on Thursday nights? They've had an incredible time from what I understand. They just finished up, right? You just finished up. They're going to come back the first of the year and have another couple of them girls it's there for you you say you have other things to do great but if you can free up your time i know that getting in the word of god with some sisters in the lord will really nurture you to be a better woman in jesus christ men have a bible study on monday nights oh they, they do yeah you get a text sent out to you girls and guys check your phones hey Kindred men's study, Monday night. We're getting together at 7 in the coffee house. So be there. It's going to be a great study. they just finishing up, right? This Monday will be the last one. Hey, come out. It's a great time in the word. Prayer groups constantly going on. Guys are getting together 7 o'clock on Sunday, Saturday morning to pray. It's a place for you to pray. Sunday morning in the cafe at 8 a.m., missions support team. It's your opportunity here. Thank you Sunday is also a chance for me to say to all of you, there's thankfulness in all the people that lead all this, but there's also thank yous to all of you that take part. Now, here's the challenge. As you've been refreshed, refresh others and tell them and acknowledge it. And then the other slide I have thinking about during the week is the one-by-one one discipleship. Someone took advantage of that this morning, came up to me after service, said, how can I get in on that? And they also spoke of the women's ministry. I said, I can tie you together to that person as well. This young lady wanted to know what it means for one-by-one one discipleship. Could I be discipled? Could I, could I be involved? I said, no, we're not doing that anymore. We're not teaching you the Bible. You're going to have to leave. I was serious. I was mad at her for even asking that she could want to learn the Bible. I was not thankful at all. Can you imagine having that terrible kind of an attitude? Sometimes we brush people off and we give them. I was so excited. I said, there's a guy named Brian Calloway. And just so happened as I'm talking to that person, he walked through the door. I said, you see his radiant wife? He's the guy next to her. You had the Scooter's coffee. It worked out very nice. I said, see the Scooter's cup? Brian's right. My point is this. One by one. Discipleship. You want to learn? You want to grow? Just a one-on-one -on -one setting, not a small group. And, of course, the Bible Institute. So I, I gave you the two, the two bookends. A low level, get involved, learn the Bible one-on-one. -on -one. How about Acts 1-8 Bible Institute? 
pastor, you're not deep enough for me. You don't get into the word of God deep enough for me. Bible Institute, we're in our sixth semester. Okay? You have an opportunity to study the Bible at a deep, deep level with some great Bible teaching. Okay? Join in. We'll be signing up people December and January for our next semester, semester number seven. Heads up. Be ready. It'll be out there. So how do I pull this all together? Well, it says up there, very simply this. It is a holy calling. It's always been a holy calling for all of us, but we really highlighted it a big, in a big way in our Acts 1-8 conference. And the Sunday after the conference, I preached a, a very simple message, but I believe it was pretty strong in the Word because it was the Word of God. I said, why ashamed? Well, look at the verse up on the screen. Verse number 8. Chapter number one, Second Timothy, be thou not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. So again, I highlighted that as we go back one slide and you say, be not thou therefore ashamed. You say, well, you already covered that. We're going to look at this here in about three or four minutes and tie it all together in a different way. Because it truly is Paul the Apostle telling Timothy, don't be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. We go back one verse, it says in verse number 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Believers in Jesus Christ, you do not have a spirit of fear, but it does come and hound you. You have power, love, and a sound mind from your salvation, from your holy calling. And you can stand in that. Don't be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. I know the Bible says, hey, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, so don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What about his... Is it that that's the only place he's referencing? Because he is saying, in verse number 8, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. He continues in his sentence, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. I looked at that last week, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Follow with me, because I'm going to get to verse number 12 and highlight the two bookends of this ashamed part. Watch. But is now, verse number 10, made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. Paul becomes very personal about, hey, all of this I take on and all of this I commit to you and all of this I say to you, Timothy, at a very high level. I'm a teacher, apostle, hey, uh, this is where I'm at. For you as I communicate this from the word of God, the Holy Spirit is telling every believer very clearly this. You're not to be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord. You're not to be concerned so much or worried about all the different fears that come because you have power and love and a sound mind. The afflictions of the gospel will come, but you, you're going to get through them because that's what saved you, in verse number 9, and gave you a holy calling. And it's according to his purpose and grace in Christ Jesus. And he makes it manifest by the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's abolished death. So the resurrection, it's all like, wow, I can just live for Christ, period. And I can have this life in Christ, period. Yes. But it's not period because it continues all the way into eternity. So why would I be ashamed of that kind of life? I can live a life that's full, complete, and abundant. See, it all comes together. As Paul's writing this to Timothy, you're going, okay, What's your point, Pastor? Verse number 12. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed and persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I am in his hands. It is his promise upon me. So, the highlight of this verse number 12, nevertheless I am not ashamed. I said, okay, Pastor, again, you're repeating yourself. Well, by the way, I think it still is a great way of teaching the Bible. Sometimes you need to hear it two, three, four, five, six times before it finally sinks in. Here's the application in our Thank You Sunday to finish this up. Thank You Sunday reminds us not to be ashamed of God's beautiful family of devoted servants. You see, devoted servants in God's family, all of you, are doing it by the gospel of Jesus Christ that you're not to be ashamed of. Consequently, you're serving, ministering, putting your heart on the line. And you're not ashamed because it's the gospel. 
Now we look at other people and we go, wow, thank you for serving that day. I appreciate, I acknowledge how you're there for people when we need you. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby, for singing despite your brother and his craziness. But to be on a stage with your mom and your brother to sing praises, hallelujah, thank you. Both of you together as a husband and wife singing unto the Lord. You see, we acknowledge these things. I acknowledge, Steve, how behind the scenes you're typing up emails for people to be informed on what goes on in the investor's call. You said it makes a difference, and so we acknowledge that. Why would I want to even think that it would be shameful of me to say thank you for someone that in the gospel that I'm not to be ashamed of would serve the Lord? Because Paul himself said, you would refresh others. You will refresh others. You'll give them a cold drink of water when they're tired. You will give them a <laughs> pat on the back and say, keep on serving God until it's over. Keep on teaching the Bible. Don't stop teaching the Bible. I am so thankful. Well, I only get two or three people that come. Thank you for the two or three people that come. Well... Most of the people that I've discipled one by one, they haven't done well. They haven't stayed in the game. That's okay. Jesus Christ had a few guys that, that messed up too. But he kept on coming back and he said to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? He gave him another shot. He gave him another chance. Jesus is saying, I'm thankful for you. I acknowledge you. I know you're a mess that needs the Holy Ghost. And when he comes into you, you'll be preaching like you've never preached before and you don't even know it yet, pal. But I acknowledge that in you because I'm not ashamed of the testimony of the Lord in you. In fact, I'm thankful for you. That's the part of which we look and go, we need to be reminded not to be ashamed of God's beautiful family of devoted servants. Because you are part of something that really... I mean that. Of the testimony of Aaron Shear, Pastor Reverend Aaron Shear from Center Shot, just a few weeks ago, he stood up here four Sundays ago and said, if I lived in this town and someone knew about this place, I would want them to tell me about it. What? What? I would want, this is a man that's traveled all over the country giving the gospel through archery. And I didn't pay him a thing to say it. God had him say that to us. So I ask you this question. Who have you given thanks unto and acknowledged in God's family during this year of ministry? Who have you thanked? Who have you acknowledged? Because you need to do it and I need to do it. Hey, you guys are very thank you, you, you spoil me. You are, I don't deserve, I mean that. I've said it to you. I don't deserve the nice words that you say to me, I am so thankful. Go tell others how thankful you are of them and acknowledge what they're doing and tell them I'm grateful for the value, the worth, the importance you bring to the gospel ministry of First Bible Baptist Church. So on this Sunday today, we're reminded as we come to the Lord's Supper. It reminds us never to be ashamed of God's beautiful sacrifice. Oh, how beautiful. You're in good company when you say, in response to Paul's command, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. When you say yes to that, you're in good company with Jesus and Paul and a few others after. Between them and now, there's been a lot of men and women before you that we should just say thank you. So thank you to all of you this Sunday. Let us not be ashamed of God's beautiful sacrifice in Jesus Christ as we take the Lord's Supper. Please bow your heads for a word of prayer as we go into the Lord's Supper. Our Father in heaven, 
we can't say to you enough, thank you for Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for continuing to be all that we need. Thank you for the word of God, the living word. Thank you for the way, the truth, and the life that no man can come to the Father but by you, Jesus. And thank you for the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us and how we have a more sure word of prophecy, your word right before us. Thank you for the truth of thankfulness and giving thanks today. Thank you, Sunday is a beautiful place where we just say, thank you, God, for all the people in our lives that minister on Sundays during the week, behind the scenes, everywhere at First Bible. And now as we focus our attention on the beautiful sacrifice of you, Jesus, I pray that you'll be honored and glorified as we take the Lord's Supper. In Jesus' name, amen.